All right, everyone, here we are with ticker symbol SPX, which is the S&P 500 index. And before I jump into this, I want to say welcome to all my first time viewers and investors. Welcome to my channel, Invest for Tomorrow. Hope you guys find this video helpful and informative and it means you well. To all my subscribers, welcome back and let's jump into this chart. So I've been doing analysis on the S&P 500 due to the fact that this is the companies and the index that has been receiving uh, benefits from these pumps, right? And even when the pumps, we can get an idea of what's going on on the overall market. I know it's not the whole market, but it's the top 500 performing companies of America. So these companies are the ones driving, quote unquote, the economy in which direction it's going and so forth. And I just like the S&P 500 because it's the blue chip stocks that are in here. A lot of the major tech stocks are in here and a lot of well-known companies are in the Fortune 500, right? So with doing these analysis, I'm showing you guys the dates of the pumps and what is going on when these pumps uh, are accomplished, right? And most of the time, these pumps, what they do is either they continue to bring this up in an upward direction or they level it off and save the market from falling harder and deeper down. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up right now what our last scheduled pump was. And it was on the 15th. It was earlier this week. And I'm going to go ahead and go over the 15th. And I'm here to announce the next scheduled pump, which is on the 22nd. So we won't know until the next schedule releases until October 14th. And for now, they have confirmed that from the 15th to the 14th, there's going to be scheduled dates. Right now, we know these two, and each of these are pumped in the morning, and I want us to just see what happened on the 15th, right, from the 14th to the 15th, which was the first pump, and what we can expect for the 22nd. So I'd write those numbers down and those dates so that you guys can keep that in mind. Now, back to the chart, the S&P 500 hit highs of 35.88 here, and from that point forward, we've dipped and i circled here the beginning of the last scheduled pumps which was on the 18th is where it started and it was for a month until the 14th and we can clearly see here how it all uh turned out and and worked out here and uh, the last pump uh was on the 8th i believe which was here, it was it kind of saved itself and then it dipped harder. And then we didn't know about pumps until the 14th. And here we are seeing the first pumps, right? Which was on the 15th, 14th to the 15th, and the next one coming for the 22nd, which I'm going to talk about. But very interesting enough that if you got in when the first pumps were announced, right? Starting on the 18th, it went up and down, but it was continuing to work its way up to newer highs. And the last second to last pump, excuse me, because the last one was on the 8th, was on the 1st. And from the 1st to the 2nd, there was some anticipation there and profits to be taken. I mean, you started at this point, you ended at this point. Now, I know it dipped, but if you saw that dip coming and you had entered here, you were still profiting. And that's what I talked about in my last video, and that's why that circled. And I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys some back information on that. But let's zoom in here and see what happened on the 14th to the 15th. So 14th, right, on the 11th, it started to create the anticipation. The 14th leveled off. And 14th to the 15th, you can clearly see that we started the day here at 33.84. And it reached highs, right, of 34.21. So from 33.84 to 34.21, that may seem like a small move, but that's 40 points on the index. And that's also depending on which ticker symbol in the S&P 500 that you've been following, which I advise everybody to choose one that they believe in and feel comfortable putting money into. And um, after looking at the behavior on how it acts, the same day of these pumps, double check how does that ticker symbol react because some of them go up between 30 cents to two dollars according to these pumps now this pump clearly from the 14th to the 15th it just leveled it off and stopped it from hitting your lows and you can clearly see here which the 11th on a uh, friday 
created anticipation. The 14th was kind of a, a leveled off day. And from the 14th to the 15th, this stock did rise. And on the 16th, it hit highs here of 34.28. And from that point forward, it's hit newer lows. So now what do we expect for, obviously, the next pump? It's on the 22nd. So Monday is in between the next pump because that's on a Tuesday, the 22nd. And the question is, in which direction is this going? I mean, we've actually fallen into a bearish trend here overall for the market. And um, it was very bullish for some time. And here we are starting to see the bearish effects. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, well, it's in a bearish effect because of elections. And it's a natural cause that happens and so forth and a lot of tech stocks have actually fallen and a lot of people are probably taking uh profits from this run and the question is how much more down is this going to reach and are these pumps going to save it because the question is is the stock market crash coming uh as long as these pumps are happening i don't think a crash per se like a really deep fall will happen but we are starting to see a slight you know, falling down in a downward direction. I mean, it's no longer going up and down, up and down in an upward direction because that's what we saw in this bullish run. It was up and down, up and down, but you ended up at a higher point. Here we are starting up and down, up and down, up and down, and we're at a lower point. So let's see here what are the different routes this could take according to what happens on Monday. So Monday, if it actually starts to fall and hang out, somewhere in a lower area below the stock price right tuesday is just going to be recovery and it's going to level off and maybe can slightly break through it bringing it up to newer highs and probably can create some excitement for investors because these pumps are to actually level off the market and create more attraction for investors to be attracted to actually invest and start putting more money into the market that's what these pumps are for but it so happened that the pump actually was making this a very bullish run throughout the whole year. And people, regardless of the ups and downs, more people were coming in, creating more of a bullish trend and run as these pumps were actually helping to continue to accelerate and propel forward. But now all I'm seeing is based off of the recent pump on the 14th and on the 8th, all it did was recover uh the the stock market from falling to newer lows i mean from the eighth falling there was a slight recovery here and then it dipped and on the ninth people were anticipating for the next pumps and then people started taking profits so we fell and quickly we could see here on 14 how it started to rise and leveled off and then it went from 33.84 to 34.20 one twenty in the twenties range, so that was like a forty uh, dollar jump, forty dollar uh, difference that created some rise. But like I said, that's that could be anywhere between thirty cents, maybe even let's just lower it, it down to to a more significant and reduced number that can make more sense. It could be anywhere from ten cents to two dollars. I'd say it could it could be a little bit more, but it could be usually 10 cents to two dollars depending on the s p 500 company and what ticker symbol it is and on the days of the pump such as on the 14th if you want to go ahead and look you should definitely look at a lot of different s p 500 companies or any blue chip stocks american companies and see how they did on the 14th from the 14th to the 15th and you will see that there was a slight rise if they are the ones benefiting from these pumps and that's why this is very important and I want to share this with everybody because a lot of people are overlooking this or may not even know about this and can definitely take advantage day trading, swing trading, or even uh, playing out, you know, options because you can go ahead and, like I said, start at one point on the 18th and ended up at this point. I know it dipped down on the 8th and it kind of broke even, but if you were really paying attention to what was going on even though you know it fell down to that point right about that point where the 50 day moving average was broken through i would have made a decision as an investor and i still would have broken out of it right at a new 
higher point. You started out here close to the 3384, and you got out here at 3525. I mean, that's a significant difference. And in ticker symbols, that can be anywhere from 30 cents to five dollars. And in options, I, I honestly don't know how much it could be, but definitely, I'm assuming that there should have been some type of profits, depending how long out you you used it or called it. But I'm not here to tell you guys what to buy and what to sell, what to hold. I'm just here to inform you guys on this information that you guys as investors can make your own rational decisions and make some great trading moves here and take advantage of this. But right now, it's a little bit different. I'm just seeing it leveling off. There's still something to take advantage of because right there at 3384 and these highs on obviously the next day and so forth of 3421, uh, it, it definitely is a great way to to make a quick buck depending on what moves you're making and what what stocks you're getting into but back to monday monday will possibly do this effect of obviously dipping and probably doing a recovery if it dips it's going to do a recovery now on the other hand which is the other scenario that i want to point out it could be one of the two and i know that um it could seem a little confusing right that well you said one or the two obviously one or the other can happen well i'm just telling you guys the scenario i'm not i'm not here to predict i don't like predicting but those are one of the reasons why this is so great to do chart analysis because you get to see according to what happens what's going to happen next so if monday it dips obviously there should be some type of recovery on tuesday right because of the pump I don't know how significant, and like I said, it could be a leveling off. So if you're an investor and you're watching this dip, you're going to want to see this dip below this support level of 32.92 so that you can go ahead and make a decision on Monday if you're going to get in and swing trade or day trade the next day or put a position for today and then sell it the next day because of the pump. That's why I'm making these videos to you guys. And go ahead, make your own analysis, make your own decisions, check it out, give it a try, and go from there. Now, if on Monday we start to see this rise, right, and it levels off, the pump, what it's going to do is bring it to newer highs. Now, quickly after that newer highs is reached, this could start to work its way down and level off back down at a lower point. But if Monday starts to create that anticipation and excitement, then obviously on Tuesday, it's going to rise up, which is exactly what we saw happen here on last week's Monday. So Friday ended there and Monday, it started to rise, leveled off, and then Tuesday, it brought it up to newer highs. So that's what's important there to pay close attention is if, it, if it's going to do something like this or if it's going to do obviously something that is in the lines of the the stock you know whichever one it is or just the index as a whole if you want to use it as a point of reference if the point of reference here at the s p 500 does the opposite of what i just circled then it would be something like falling leveling off and on tuesday the pump brings it up and either levels this off or brings it up to newer highs but you will have to go ahead and see what's happening Monday now I do want to let you guys know whichever way it goes if you're strategic and smart about which direction you go in and what moment you get in you'll know that if you got it at a low it should rise due to the pump and if the anticipation happens and it leveled off wherever it levels off since you missed out the first ride well, it leveled off here, and that's still below these highs up here. Now, anybody that got in at this point, they got a different stretch. But if you get from here to here, that's still a good stretch, you know. So there's opportunity here in these pumps. And that's what I'm here to show you guys and make clear to you guys what's going on. If it does this anticipation and level off, there should be a rise. And if it slowly falls and, and levels out, then there's going to be a leveling off here or it can actually break through it a little bit 
and bring it up to newer highs. But like I said, the pumps, what they do is they start to bring this up and start to bring it to newer highs or they level it off from stopping the market from dipping down much harder than it could or it should if these pumps weren't arranged. So great news for us as investors. There's a quick opportunity to make a quick buck. If you go ahead and do your own rational decisions, you do your own due diligence, you do your own research, you guys will be able to benefit from these opportunities. Just double check which companies you're going to go ahead and do this. Make sure that the companies are aligning with how the S&P is reacting so that you guys can make a rifle decision and profit from these opportunities. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you guys to buy, hold, or sell. I'm just here to state why. The market crash is not coming yet. Uh, we do have these scheduled pumps, like I said, till October 14th. The moment they stop, then maybe analysts that are saying there is a fall to come, they may be right and they may be correct. But as of right now, these pumps are stopping the market from hitting newer lows. Again, the 15th was the last one. And our upcoming one is on the 22nd, which is this Tuesday. And that's why we're analyzing what may happen on Monday. And according to what happens on Monday, as investors, we will all be able to make our own decisions to get in and get out on the 22nd, ride those waves and take advantage of those profits. It's literally free money in the sense of it has so much billions of dollars being put into the market that these companies are taking advantage of at such a low interest. I mean, they're taking out, for example, a hundred million and their interest is a hundred thousand. If they have the hundred thousand cash on hand, they just made themselves a hundred million dollars richer and they just pay off straight up the, 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 the interest, right? And then they'll worry about the hundred million after later in the long run as they go ahead and use that to continue to uh, produce and innovate and create and grow and uh, these companies are taking advantage of that and as investors we can jump in and get our piece of the pie as well so hope you guys found this video helpful and informative share us with your friends and community don't forget to hit the like button and let me know you watch this video and if you feel inclined or encouraged to subscribe please do so but don't forget to click on the bell so that you guys don't miss a single video that i post by turning on all notifications and thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money